Hello everyone and welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's video is going to be a small refactor of the beginner series that I did and I will also show a couple other things that I don't think I've shown yet in videos so there'll, there'll be some stuff for everybody here but this was something for the most part this series is good information. I did this a few days into Pixel Game Maker and I did this over a two week span. So these videos are, are very, when I was very new and there are a couple things that I wish I wouldn't have um, done. And when I see them be brought up in discord, I'm like, ah, oh, yeah, I know I should make another video on it. I just haven't yet. So here it is. And it particularly has to do with um, picking up these heart pickups that we made. All right. So when you get later on, you start adding a HUD and you start adding settings that will automatically show you're taking damage the way that we did the heart pickups is it's going to start damaging you okay and that's because and the same with the house here when we detect the house it's going to damage you you can see that i'm flashing red a little bit so we need to refactor that again and that was a a big no-no was using attack detection to uh, pick those things up so let's get started with that first and i'll go into my uh, player object here and I'll show you the automatic hit setting first. If you go to the cog wheel here, um, you'll see that I have receive damage settings selected and you can click okay and it will add this section. From there, I just added a hit receive damage and I just made it to where it will filter the player a little bit, um, a little bit of red for a brief period of time and it's automatic. As soon as attack detection hits the player's collision detection, this is going to run. Unless you have a switch that you can turn off and say don't run. All right. So that and this as you start getting through your projects, it's going to you're going to start using these kind of settings. And but if we go to our animations and we go to our life, we put that attack detection there which we do not need anymore, so I'm going to delete that. And also of the house, we put our attack detection there. So I'm going to delete that. Uh, we got to make sure that we delete it off of this side too. So I'm going to delete that there. All right, so we have a fresh house and a fresh life to use a new method. And by the way, don't don't worry about all this other stuff I have. I don't think I've, uh, this is like halfway through the series. So a lot of stuff I haven't shown. Um, some stuff was just experimental, all this stuff. So we need to pick up the life now. We need a way to pick up the life. And how we're gonna do it is we're gonna go to this life here. And instead of using attack detection, we're gonna go to the cogwheel. We're gonna go to a set field of vision. And we're gonna click okay. It's gonna bring this tab up here. We're gonna click add. And we're going to say the player is in range. That's what we're going to call this one. And we're going to use fill the vision for it. And here is where you can set the sizing of it and the shape. Uh, I want it a 360 circle. Um, I do want it a little smaller. I think 10 works. I'll keep the scale 100%. And the rotation of the angle doesn't matter because we're using a 360. Um, we will keep this one select right now, and the reason why we will apply the color right now is because we can click preview, and we can see, if I move, we can see that, that light, uh, like this right here, around the life. And that's exactly uh, what we want. So that's about the right size, actually. So I'm going to keep that. And now that we know the right size, we can uncheck that, and if we click the preview, that field of vision view is now gone. So it, it, I like field of vision because you can uh, visually see it and then you can turn it off once it's once you're done. Because there is another way we could, we, there's multiple ways we could detect, but that's one of my favorites. So now in the check where we pick up the life and then it destroys itself, um, we're gonna remove that collision detection because that is not the right way. And we're going to add another link. We're going to say discovered other object. So this is the field of vision check. Discovered other object. 
we're going to select the field of vision that we want and we're going to say what object is this looking for and that's the player so when the player object comes into the player in range field of vision this condition is going to be true and it's going to go to destroy and we can actually test that out we can break a pot and we can run over the heart and now we do not get hit we do not lose a heart and we we still picked it up successfully all right so now we need to do this to the house so i'm just going to come to the house here going to add fill of vision going to go and add one and call it player in range again now on this one if we go to the animation of the house, I don't want a full circle. I actually just want like a half circle like this to go around like that. And we can actually do that. We can, in the objects here, we can uh, set the, instead of a 360, okay, we want a 180. We want a half circle. And then now in the rotation, that is where you can set uh, where do you want the middle of that 180 to be? So if it was pointing this way, then your 180 would shoot out here, go half moon or half circle, and then go right there. So that's that's where your angle would be. So if we faced it up, that means it would be a 180 like that. And that's what we need. However, in 1.0.5, the visual is bugged. And so in order to get their correct it's bugged as in it's showing opposite so while the detection still happening in the right angle the actual field of vision is showing opposite so for now um, for testing we're going to uh, run this and so we're not looking at this because remember we scale it unfortunately that's another thing I do differently but that works and I'm gonna hit F1 I'm going to debug and I'm going to go to wall detection because I want the gap to be very low between there. And I also want the sides to come in a little bit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in the sides about 15% scale and I'm going to lower it about, let's just try that. Let's try 20. Hit preview. And that's perfect. That's about exactly what I want. And you can see this is actually so much easier than setting up the attack detection for that. Yeah, this is just the better method. Okay, so now we, we, we know that we want that. However, remember, because of this 1.5 bug, we have to place it back up to the proper detecting angle. And then we'll just turn this off. So now we can go to action programs, we can go to the check, and we can delete that collision, and we can add discover object, player in range, of the player, we can hit OK, and then we can just copy, go to this link out, because remember, we want it to also go back to full opacity, so what we need to do here is I, I, cop I pasted it right here, I'm going to delete that collision one. And uh, I don't know if I've mentioned this in the videos yet, but there's this equal sign with a slash through it. And if we click it, it, that means that we want the opposite value. So this check we're saying when the player is in the range of this field of vision. If we click the opposite value, we're saying if the player is not in the range of this field of vision. All right, so that's Sometimes it can look confusing, but it's actually really cool that we have this option. And so that's how you make it if you're not in range. And now if we play test, we can uh, go down and we get the same exact effect, except for we're not taking hits <laughs> from the attack detection. Okay, now there is something else cool that one of the things that we're going to go over that I don't know if I've covered yet is we're going to add a way to get opacity behind tiles and objects, but the objects, there's just a small little thing you got to think about. 
So we're going to go to our player here and we're going to go again to this cogwheel. This thing has a lot of useful uh, settings in it. And we're going to click on uh, sequence settings for overlapping tile and object. We're going to hit OK. Go to it. And we're going to see that we have conditions for when the tile is overlapping an object or when an other object is overlapping this object. All right, and then there's a few settings here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to choose the make a, a character vicinity transparent and I'm going to say a circle, okay? And I'm going to want it to be, I'll just do like a like 32 by 32 for now. And we want it to be, uh, let's just do transparent. Yeah, fully fully transparent. I think that's what that means. Let's try it out. And that, that's all we have to set up. So now when we go and play test, we can go behind the house and we get to see. And it gets a small little circle here, which is kind of cool. It's like a little z a zoned in thing. Now, the, the reason that it's overlapping, you'll see that it overlapped part of it, but not this part, okay? And that is because in the uh, layering system, it's above, all right? So it's, it's, it's looking for if it's on a higher layer than the player. And the same goes for the objects. For instance, in this setting, we have other objects overlapping. When we hit play, we go down, you'll see that we don't get that overlapping effect. We get the, our transparency thing, but we don't get the overlapping effect. And that is because the house is on the same layer as the player. So if we were to go to the above layer and we were to take the house and place it, and I think I scaled it 200%, which again, I, I would not do that again. <laughs> and if we play test here, we'll see that we can get that circle. We also get the that overlapping effect of the transparency. And that is because field of visions actually do detect between layers. So you, you can have that effect between layers as well. All right, so showed you that. There is uh, one more thing that I do want to go over. And it has to do with in the scene settings under group management. And I was, uh, one thing that I'm learning is you get these two default groups here, player group and enemy group. And the, the more I use the engine, the more I realize that this player group is only for the player. So your player object should probably be the only one with this player group. That's how I do things now. And so, for instance, we have this life that we want to pick up. We have the the pots that we want to hit or the house um, that we want to be interactable with or an NPC or something. And so what I would do now is I have an NPC one, and I'll, I'll just leave that there. I think that's a future video too. But I'm, I am going to add one that I add quite a bit now. And it's just player interactables or interactable or or it could be pickup. I've I've named it a few different things, player pickups, player interactables. If I use interactables, then that means like everything player interactable related. The pot, the live pickup, the house. That's how I view it. So player interactables. I'm gonna add that group. And then we're going to assign them. We're gonna go back and reassign these. So we're gonna start with the life. We're gonna right click and go to object settings. And you can see that it was a player group. Well, we want it to be an interactable group now. All right. We don't want attack detection for player anymore because that was the wrong way. We don't want wall detections for for anything either. And we're going to click OK. So when you do change a group or when you add a group, you really have to be careful. You have to think, because we see this a lot in Discord, uh, common questions is, I, I did something, but it's not detecting. And that's because if you add a group and you change the setting, you need to go to other group, other objects that are affected by it and make sure their settings are correct as well. So for instance, the life and the player interact. So we need to go to the player. We need to check object settings. 
and its player group is fine. Uh, the allow attack detection uh, hits. Um, we're going to say uh, for enemies, yes. Now allow wall detection impacts. We're going to add interactables because we're allowing wall detection impacts for player interactables. So if we add that and we click OK and we uh, play test here, we can uh, break the pot and we can activate it. Now, what about the pot? All right. The pot, it could be an enemy. I think that's what it is, too. It could be an enemy or it could be a player interactable now. And it can allow uh, attack detection hits from the player. Now, if we did this, if we just changed this to player interactable and didn't change anything else, I want to show you this is the common uh, question we get. And now you try to attack and nothing's happening. So why didn't that at attack? And that's because, remember, if you change one setting, you've got to make sure every other object that can interact with it is also changed. So let's go and check our player object. Well, our attack detections hit only enemies. So now that we've changed that pot to a player interactable, we now have to include player interactables. Okay. So now if we hit OK, oops, and play test, we can break the pots now and pick them up. All right, and that's something I just wanted to go over. So we've gone over a few things. We've gone over refactoring the life pickup and the house transparency object using fill division the correct way. <laughs> uh, I briefly showed a couple things like sequence for overlaps for um, uh, things that are above on layers. I, I briefly showed a receive damage setting, which is a very nice one. And then we went over uh, the groups. That's right, player groups. Or, uh, sorry, just group management in general. So, yeah, I think this is a good uh, uh, refactor for this series. And I will put it in between uh, probably one of these. Let's see, probably it'll be in between 12 and 13 or something like that. So, yeah, we'll see you at the next video.